Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to talk to you about powering your Pi in the field. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So powering the Raspberry Pi in the field can be a bit of a challenge in and of itself. And the primary reason for that is the Raspberry Pi requires 5 volts of power and most of our equipment, our radios and whatnot, well that all runs on 12 volts. So if we want to try to keep that simple and run everything from the same power supply, such as a battery, in the field, well we're going to have to do some sort of conversion to get 12 volts down to 5 volts. And I've tried a lot of different uh, solutions to solve that problem in the past. And a lot of them just have real struggles, uh, generally because they are creating radio frequency interference on at least one of the bands, if not multiple bands, all at one time. And depending on the device, some of them are better and some of them are worse. And I've also been doing some testing on a new way to power the Pi in the field where we don't have to do that conversion. But let's take a quick look at some of the things that I have tried in the past, some of the different varieties of power converters that we can get a hold of, and then I'll show you uh, the, the new thing that I've been testing out and show you some of my test results as to how long you can expect it to power your Raspberry Pi on your next outing. So I just did a quick search on Amazon for 12 volt to 5 volt uh, converters and this is one of the first results that I found. Now I haven't tried this specific one but this is very similar to a lot of the others on the market. Uh, this was one of the first styles that I tried to use and just found them to be terribly noisy. And that's kind of reflected in the price. You get three of these things for only $9.99. Uh, in this case, uh, what holds true more times than not is you do get what you pay for. So I have tried these, and like I said, you'll, you might be okay, uh, say on 40 meters, you go over to 20 meters, and you've just got... Uh, an S9 noise level, something that's completely unworkable. I have seen some like this that are even worse than that, where there's so much RFI coming off of this, pretty much any band you try to get on is completely unusable. Now, for probably the last two years, this has been my go-to uh, Pi Hat for converting 12 volts down to the needed 5 volts to power the Raspberry Pi. You can see right here I have purchased uh, four of these over that period of time. The last one I just purchased earlier this month, September 4th of 2021, for one of the last Raspberry Pi 4s that I bought. Uh, it does work with the 3B Plus as well. And this one has given me pretty good results. I have been fairly pleased with this particular power board, and I still recommend this board. However, what's got me to looking for maybe alternate power solutions for the Raspberry Pi was that first field trial I did with the 705. Uh, I ran into some noise issues there, and I still haven't completely gotten to the bottom of it. I've heard two or three different theories on what might have been generating some of that noise. Maybe it was a poor quality USB cable. Uh, maybe it was the internal charging from uh, the 705 itself. Maybe it was this power hat. I really still need to get back out into the field and do some more testing. I just haven't had time to do that with the schedule that I've been running with my day job that is on my short list of things to get done is to try to figure that out. But I did have time to test another possible power solution uh, here recently. And what I came up with was a simple cell phone battery bank. Now, this battery bank was one that I did have laying around. You'll see that I picked up, uh, I've picked up a couple of these back in June of this year for another project but it was something that I wanted to uh, try with the Raspberry Pi. 
they're inexpensive. I mean, they're 12 bucks a piece and you get 10,000 milliamp hours out of this pack. And I'll leave a link to this pack down in the description below so you can find this exact one. So I connected this up to a Raspberry Pi 3 that uh, goes along with my Yezu 817. It's one of the few uh, remaining Pi 3s that I have still in circulation with some of the radios that I use, and I'll probably be upgrading this one in the very near future. But on a Raspberry Pi 3, I ran my battery test script that you can install with Build-A-Pi. And if you look right here, this test was started uh, September the 21st uh, of 2021, and I began this test at 6.05 p.m. in the evening. Now, we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom of this. The battery test script uh, makes an entry roughly every 10 minutes, I believe. No, it is every 10 minutes. Uh, it makes an entry into a text file so you can tell how long uh, the battery lasted. Now, I did set this to run, the, the battery test script to run for a full 24 hours. I didn't quite get 24 hours out of it. You can see here that the test ended on the 22nd, so the following day, and the last entry was made at 1.45 p.m. So I got, uh, what is that, a little bit over 19 hours out of the battery pack. Now, keep in mind for both of these tests uh, that I did, the Raspberry Pis were sitting at idle, so I didn't have them, uh, you know, cranked up running something like FT8 or JSA Call uh, that would have put more load on the CPU. If you do that, you're probably going to get a little bit less uh, life out of this battery, but I was pleasantly surprised when I got 19 hours out of a Raspberry Pi 3. Now, I did repeat that exact same test with a Raspberry Pi 4. As you would expect, I didn't get as much time out of it. It was roughly around 12 hours. Uh, so about 7 hours less running the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the Raspberry Pi 3. So it's kind of a good argument if you're still running the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it, it, in some cases, is superior to the Raspberry Pi 4. And that primary case is the power consumption uh, that you that uh, the less power consumption that you have with the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, every other uh, use case that I can think of, I would definitely recommend going to the Raspberry Pi 4. Some may argue that they do run a little bit warmer. And uh, for the test that I did with the Raspberry Pi 4, I did have the fan running the entire time because... Well, that's the way I would operate it in the field, and I wanted as close to a real-world comparison as I could get. But even with that fan running, I still managed to get 12 hours out of this little bitty power pack. Uh, I didn't get weights on this, but it's not much. I'm going to guess maybe 8, 10 ounces, uh, and that's just a, an, a, a calibrated hand here taking that measurement. So you might need to weigh that out on your own, but... They are uh, fairly lightweight and will not add much weight or bulk to your pack. Uh, the nice thing about these is when I do have these connected up to the Raspberry Pi, there's no power conversion being done. You're getting 5 volts out, which is exactly what we need for the Raspberry Pi. So that pretty much eliminates uh, all chances of any RFI noise. I know there's some other circuitry in here that maybe some of them uh, could potentially introduce some RFI noise, but for this particular pack, I didn't see enough register uh, on the radio for me to be concerned with. So there's just one other option for you that you might want to consider. If you've tried some of the other converters in the past and you're having RFI issues, maybe look at something like going to a, a battery bank like this or a battery pack like this to power that Raspberry Pi. I would think that for the vast majority of outings, you know, anything excluding maybe a uh, fill day uh, or some long camping uh, trip where you re were going to be gone for, you know, a week to 10 days and you need, needed to power it, well, that might not be enough. You could plan to recharge that with a solar panel 
that is definitely a possibility. Uh, but for most short outings, you know, uh, a quick trip uh, out for a poda where you want to use your Raspberry Pi for logging, or you want to use uh, the Raspberry Pi for FT8, this battery bank is going to be a great solution for you. Even running the Raspberry Pi 4, you can expect to get, I would say, 10 to 12 hours out of it. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's a look at several different ways you might choose to power your Raspberry Pi in the field. Uh, some of them that I mentioned early on, I would probably just avoid altogether, not waste my uh, 10 or 15 bucks, since I've already done that, and can pretty much tell you they're not very uh, friendly when it comes to using them with ham radio. I still recommend that Maker Focus power board. If I do determine that that's what uh, is creating some interference with my 705, I will definitely let you guys know. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.